Hello and welcome to the news button. In what is considered to be a great shocker to India, a Kothari court recently sentenced eight Indian nationals to death, accusing them of spying for Israel. These individuals, former Indian Navy officials, were employed by a Kothari company, Dora Global, which reportedly advised the Kothari military on a secret submarine program. So why is it a saka? First, India has historically good relations with Qatar. Second, India is a huge importer of Qatari oil. And so again, great economic and trade relations between the two countries. So why did Qatar do this? Were the Indian ex-defense personnel actually involved in spying? Had that been, they must have been already awarded punishment much earlier. If you look at the timing, it's crystal clear that there is something fishy out there. It comes at a time when India came off as one of the first countries to expressly condemn the heinous terrorist attack by Hamas on Israeli civilians, which left 1,400 dead and over 200 kidnapped. Qatar is a monarchy, no liberal democracy with a neutral rule of law like ours. It's a constitutional emirate and an absolute Islamic state. Going by past records, it has a history of supporting Islamic terrorist activities. It is essentially a state that supports terrorism. It's a well-known supporter of Muslim Brotherhood, which is tagged as a terrorist organization in countries like Saudi Arabia. Qatar is believed to have directly supported some of the most radical groups fighting in the Syrian war too. This even includes Al-Qaeda's affiliates in Syria, particularly the Nusra Front. Further, to bolster its government's so-called Islamist credentials, both at home and abroad, Qatar has allowed private fundraising for Al-Qaeda, ISIS and other radical organizations. Doha even encourages the private financing of extremist groups by inviting their prominent supporters to speak in Qatar. Coming to Hamas, Qatar has funded Hamas with more than $1 billion. The Hamas political leadership sits pretty in Doha, living in five-star luxuries and red carpets protected by the Qatari government. So when India condemned terrorist activities of Hamas, which happens to be Qatar's blue-eyed boys, a Qatari retaliation is obvious for sure. The verdict must be read as a clear signal to India to stay the hell out of the matter. The death sentence to the eight former Indian Navy officers on charges of espionage by a Qatari court is a great shocker to India. But no measure of shock awe or amazement can save these Indian lives. So how can we save them? How can India save them? What are India's options on the table to save them from the death penalty? First and foremost, the Indian government can explore the legal options. In fact, India already plans to take up the matter with the Qatari authorities to save the ex-Navy officers. India may even invoke an agreement signed in 2015 which allows for the transfer of sentenced prisoners between the two countries. India could also consider appealing the ruling within the Qatari judicial system or potentially taking the matter to the International Court of Justice if there were violations of diplomatic and other norms in the arrest, confinement and trial. Second. India can seek pardon for the accused men, but this is unlikely to be exercised as it presupposes admission of guilt. Third, India can put international pressure on Qatar through human rights bodies, third country governments, the United Nations and other institutions and seek a remission of the sentence. Fourth, diplomatically, India may seek assistance from other Middle East nations through the Gulf Cooperation Council. The outcome will depend on how Qatar responds and cooperates with India's requests or pressure. 
diplomatic efforts are being made by New Delhi to secure the safe release of the former noble officers. India has requested the United States to exert influence over Qatar in this matter since Washington is the Qatari government's net guarantor of security. Fifth, India can exert economic pressure by downsizing its oil and gas imports from Qatar, which would greatly hamper Qatar's economic interests. India can ban Qatar Airlines operations inside India. Al Jazeera, the prime news broadcasting company, which is banned in many Arab countries in the Middle East, should be banned in India too. Recently, the news channel sparked controversy for its war coverage, including a widely debunked report, which claimed that images of Israeli babies murdered by Hamas gunmen had been generated by artificial intelligence. If despite all efforts, Qatar refuses to comply, India should be ready to pay Qatar in the same coin and make it understand the language that it best understands. India can silently investigate Qatari citizens in India if it finds some credible evidence in any case, especially links to terror funding, terrorist activities or spying. India can mirror Qatar's action. If a sizable number of Qatari people are met to stand trial in India, it is bound to subtend Qatari stance to harass Indians and bully India. These are of course some of the options available to India and India has to take measures as per the evolving situation in Qatar in particular and Middle East in general. Qatar is clearly intolerant of India's growing ties with a Zionist nation and it is out to teach India a lesson even for lending moral support at the time of grievous terrorist strike. Internationally, it is no longer a secret that Hamas thrives under the finance and shelter of the Qatari government. It's time to pull out the big sticks vis-a-vis -vis Qatar and to make it clear to them that if they don't pressure Hamas to release the Israeli hostages, then Hamas will be told to leave Qatar. Qatar has spent billions of dollars in the World Cup. They made Qatar Airlines. They are buying up companies in Nasdaq and Silicon Valley. On the contrary, Qatar is a state sponsor of terrorism. And if it doesn't comply with global demands to put pressure, real pressure on Hamas, then Qatar should be labeled as a state that supports terrorism and be taken to fathom. Let them understand that their jets can't take off or land in international airports all over the world while they support terrorism. That they can't buy companies in NASDAQ or even use the SWIFT international banking system while they keep on openly supporting terrorists. It's time to put pressure real pressure on Qatar because time is running out. Let us know what other steps India can take to save its former noble offices. We shall await your comments. Before leaving, do not forget to like and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching the video. Thanks for your time.